Vinayak Bhashwati teacher. I am going to teach you Maharashtra State Board Curriculum Higher Level English 10th Standard Lesson Number 1.4 All the Worlds a Stage. I am Mrs. Bhashwati Banerjee and I am the creator of this video. All the Worlds a Stage. It is written by William Shakespeare. He was an English poet, playwright and actor. He was widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and world's prominent dramatist. He is often called England's national poet and the bard of Avon. This poem is taken from his play As You Like It. Here he compares the world to a stage where the drama of human life is enacted. This poem is metaphorical. Let's get ahead with the poem. All the world's a stage. The first line itself tells us this is an example of metaphor. Here the poet is not saying that the world is like a stage. Otherwise it would have been simile. The poet is saying that the world is a stage. That means it's an example of metaphor. All the men and women merely players. Players are actors or in world they have to play so many roles. Hence, men and women are directly called as players or actors. They have their exits and their entrances. Entrances mean, by the word entrances, the poet means the birth of an individual. And by the word exits, the poet means the death of an individual. And one man in his time plays many parts. Definitely an individual has to play many roles in his life. Like for example, a man can be a son, he can be somebody's brother, he can be somebody's husband, somebody's friend. Similarly, a lady can be somebody's daughter, somebody's wife, somebody's daughter-in-law. Many roles are to be played by a single individual during his lifetime. His acts being seven ages and in this poem, the lifetime of an individual is divided into seven stages of life. So that's why seven ages. At first, the infant mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. When a child is born, the child is so small, he does not know anything, his behavior is like instinctive, he only, he is unaware, completely unaware of whatever is going on around him. Mewling, the child is crying very weakly and very meekly. Puking, vomiting, he does not have the sense on, uh, like he is not trained to go and puke in uh, some uh, other secluded place. So he pukes in the nurse's arms, that is he vomits whenever he is not well. Then the whining schoolboy. Here whining can have many meanings but here I can guess whining is a teary eyed schoolboy, a schoolboy who is reluctant to go to school with his shas, uh, sashel. Sashel is a school bag and the sh uh, shining morning face creeping like a snail. How is the face of a schoolboy? It is shining morning face. Again this is an example of metaphor. Creeping like snail. This is example of simile unwillingly to school the child is not ready to go to school that like this is the problem with all the small kids initially they are very reluctant to go to school and then the lover when the school life is over then the person enters the college life when he has when he is out of his teens when he is a lover sighing like a furnace again this is an example of a simile sighing like furnace his anger is compared to that of a furnace which is something very uh, hot place with a woeful ballad that is a sad song he is singing a sad song and he is sighing like a furnace it can be sigh of uh, uh, sadness because something has happened in his life made to his mistress's eyebrow probably he is missing his girlfriend he is missing his mistress he is missing his friend and that's why this um, lover is sighing like a furnace with and singing a sad song then a soldier then in his youth uh, the person is a, working as a soldier full of strange oaths so when you are soldier your hormones are pumping you are simply you are ready to die for your country and you don't think of anything else at that time other than your country so you are full of strange oaths and bearded like a pard here pard means leopard leopard so short form of leopard is used here that is the poetic license used by william shakespeare 
so his beard is like that of a pard that is leopard jealous in honor and sudden and quick in quarrel now this is the youth of life in which a person does not have anything else in his mind and he is jealous for trivial things and for quarrel also he does not think twice he is very sudden and quickly he starts quarreling with anyone over trivial trivial matters seeking the bubble reputation and he feels as if this is to uh, simply keep his reputation on even in the cannon's cannon's mouth cannon's mouth here means that in dangerous situations now when we are talking about a soldier a soldier has to face so many dangerous situations so even in the cannon's mouth and then the justice after his youth is over when the person is in his 40s or 50s so then he becomes the justice that is the judge in his fair round belly but now he is not fit like he was used to be when he was a soldier so in his fair round belly he is overweight now with good capon lined that is the excess fat that can be seen because of the unhealthy eating habits that is the with good capon lined with eyes severe and beard of formal cut now he is not compared to leopard because he is not fierce and ferocious like a leopard now now his beard is of formal cut and his eyes are very severe very intense because now he is more experienced in his life he is full of wise saws saws meaning sayings and modern instances and so he plays his part so now he is experienced and he has many sayings he has modern instances as well and so he plays his part the sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon with spectacles on nose and pouch on side now in the sixth age the person has retired he has become thinner and now he is in slippered pantaloon slippered pantaloon is a pant which is which does not fit the person who is wearing it is actually very loose he has spectacles on nose you must have seen the reading glasses and pouch on side it is probably because of the catheter his youthful hose well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shank and his big manly voice now he is totally shrunk he has become very thin and his big manly voice is no longer there turning again towards childish treble treble is now he is three times weaker than he what he used to be when he was a child he has pipes and whistles in his sound he cannot speak like a uh, like when he used to speak when he was young so he has pipes and whistles in his sound last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and near oblivion he has no teeth he has no eyes he has no taste sans teeth sans everything second childishness the last age of the person is called as the second childishness again because he is in mere oblivion he is unaware of whatever is going on around him he is totally dependent on his family members for his basic needs sans teeth that means he has no teeth left so without teeth sans size without eyesight sans taste he has got no taste and sans everything he has nothing left so this poem is appreciation of the poem appreciation of the poem and uh, here the appreciation starts with the rhyme scheme there is no specific rhyme scheme but the poem is an iambic pentameter now the favorite line of the poem all the men and women are merely players and they have their exits and entrances now this is my favorite line students can write their own favorite lines central idea of the poem central idea of the poem is the poet said shakespeare has compared the stages in the life of a man to a role an actor would play on a theater stage all men and women take an entrance as they are born and exit the stage of life as they die let us talk about the special features of the poem the poem is satirical and humorous in tone shakespeare has vividly described all the stages of man comparing him to a snail leopard soldier and justice among other things this gives a rich visual feel to the poem 
the poem implies the meaning that man should not be too proud when young as he has to grow old one day now let us talk about the figures of speech various figures of speech are used here first one is simile as i told you sighing like furnace and bearded like a part then metaphor metaphor is implied simile all the men and women are merely players then alliteration with a wooful ballad quick in quarrel alliteration w w are uh, repeated here the sound of w and w are repeated in with a wooful ballad and quick in quarrel q q sound is repeated personification even in canon's mouth the canon is given a human quality of having a mouth possessing a mouth hence it is personification and then inversion for poetic effect the sequence of the words are changed with eyes severe and beard of a formal cut why i like this poem i like this poem because it's a beautiful descriptive allegory that teaches us how to enjoy and appreciate every stage and moment of our lives and make the most of what we have thank you so much for watching and i hope you liked it if you liked it please like and subscribe my channel and uh, goodbye from bhashwati teacher we will meet again in the next video if you like it please subscribe my channel